Hey everyone, welcome to Indicted TV. I'm your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. I also want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Royalty Honey. And if you don't want to be on my show and you want to stay home, hit up Attorney Rosenberg. On today's episode, we have YC Tokes. Welcome to Indicted, YC. Yeah, thank you for having me. You know what I mean? I know. Uh, Took us a little bit, but we finally got it. We got know? it. We're yeah, here. Yeah, we're yeah. here we're now. Here, we're yeah. here now. So we're going to start. Mm -hmm. So tell me where you're from, where you grew up. I don't mean gang. I just no, mean, no, you yeah. know, where you're from, where you grew up, yeah. brothers, sisters, mom, you know, the inside of your house. Okay. Yeah. So I was born in Orange County in Santana. I was born in Orange County. Um, I got two brothers and one older sister. We're, um, we were raised right there on, um, on Lion Street. It was like some low income apartments, you know what I mean? Right across the street from the zoo. And shit. So, yeah, it was just a, um, my parents immigrated from Mexico and that's where they ended up landing. So, that's where we grew up. Um, so, you always um, live in Santana or did you, did you go somewhere else? No, no, no. Um, I, uh, I lived there until I was uh, 11, and then I moved out to Lake Elsinore. Okay. That's, that's where I, um, I grew up. You know, a lot of my love comes from that city. And shit. Okay, so. Is that that's where you went to like junior high and high school yeah, basically? Yeah, yeah. That's like my stomping grounds, and I grew up there, you know. So. Okay, okay. Yeah. Is that where your family is still? Yeah, they're still there. Okay, yeah. so that's your home. Yeah, Elson it's my home. Yeah, uh, Lake Elsinore is your home. Yeah. Okay. Um. So did you graduate from junior high, high school? Um, ah, actually, uh, um, when I was living in Orange County, I was in um sixth grade. I think I was a writer on the on the border. Um, I ended up getting kicked out of the district because. I wanted to buy some shirts, right? So me and the homies, we had this little plot. We're like, okay, we're gonna break into the school cafeteria because they used to sell a little uh, tienda, and we're gonna steal a little change, and then we're gonna go buy some uh, pro clubs, little triple A shirts and shit, you know. So we did that, and we got caught, and we ended up getting expelled from the. Oh wait, so you never you, did? You go to juvenile hall? Huh? No, they just kicked me out of the district. So my oh. mom had to drive me all the way to Irvine, like. An hour and like forty five minutes away. So, you know? at what age did you see already changing? Like, ya quería ser que you wanted to be a travieso. Oh, well, I grew up watching my uncles. My uncles are all from gangs out there in, in Orange County, in Santana. You know, okay, so okay, from, like, okay. Those crooks and over there. But, um, yeah, basically, I those were my role models. My dad, you know, he um, he worked all day to to give us what you know. What of course. Shit, so, him, and my mom. So we were just we were left at home just meant for ourselves and shit so my uncles were 16 and 17 so they're out in the streets you know oh yeah, yeah. so you definitely wanted to be like mm -hmm. your deals that was my role model and shit. ah yeah, right there. so you got in trouble you got kicked out of the whole and district yeah. and your mom used to take you to irvine to school yeah did you did you what was did you like the what was it different like way the kids? different nah yeah i felt like uh, um it was all white people you know it was all white people and then i felt stereotyped as soon as i got in there you know like i I felt lost. I didn't know where where to go. You know, I was like, "Fuck." Yeah. Did I you drop out? No, they moved us. Um, I entered like towards the end of the the semester, so pretty much my mom by that time my dad got a better job, moved us out to Lake Elsinore. Oh, so okay, yeah. okay, okay. Now I get it. So that's why you guys moved, which was good. Yeah, yeah. You know, your parents wanted to move you out of the hood. Yeah. And take you to Lake Elsinore. Lake Elsinore is super nice. It's a, it's a nice it's a nice uh, uh, city. It's a you nice know, area, and then when yeah. you're coming from like down here, you you're moving out. Yeah. It's like okay, we're gonna take the kids out. You know, a, a better life. Yeah. Not knowing that. Yeah. You were already like. I didn't be, expect it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, um, when I first moved over there to Lake Elsinore, it was boring. I'm not a lie. It was boring. They just had a bowling alley and a movie theater and shit. And I was like, man, what the fuck is there to do? <laughs> yeah, there was nothing yeah, to do, nah, right? Nah, there ain't shit to do. But um, yeah. Did you um? Did you ever go to juvenile hall? Yeah, I hit juvenile hall. Once I became from my bottle, then I, I started hitting the hall. Oh, shit. so yeah. at, okay, okay, so at that young age, like from eleven to thirteen, I didn't hit the halls, and then once I turned fourteen, then I hit. The and halls. tell me, what was the reason why you got arrested? The first time I hit the halls was for domestic. I got into a fight with my dad. Oh, um, sh we're chunking him up, and uh, uh, I remember. The homies came to pick me up, and he was trying to hold me back. And I was already a little bud drunk, and I was like, you know, at that age, you're thinking like, Fuck, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out, like you're not gonna tell me what to do. And because uh, you're a man, yeah, you know, at 14, <laughs> you know, my pop manhandled me. We got down and shit. 
the neighbors called the cops and um they came and they pepper sprayed me in the house and shit. Fucking, <gasps> I remember my mom throwing water in my face when I was cuffed up and shit. The the hoodas were they were clowning me. Like, oh, look at your mom's throwing water in your face, you know, like. Yeah, she burns. Yeah, hell yeah. You, you know, know? Yeah. Like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Just like, just let you like be burning? Yeah, no, no not that, at all. Yeah. So they took you in. Mm -hmm. uh, how long, well, how did you feel when you were like, because how did you feel when you got to the hospital? Where did you go anyways? Because there's no like juvenile hospital over there, is there? Or did you just go to the police station? No, no, no. They, um, they got juvenile halls in Marietta, so. Pretty much right there, like uh, Lake oh, they Elsewhere. do. What is yeah. it called? It's it's called Southwest Juvenile Detention. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so okay, okay, okay. Over there, Lake Elsinore is in Riverside County. In Riverside County, we have a uh, one, two, three. We got three juvenile homes. Oh. One in Indio, one in Riverside, and then one in Marietta. Ah. Yeah. So depending where you live, that's where you. Yeah, just kind of yeah, like down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Okay. Yeah, so. yeah, I just never really, I guess I never really heard of anybody going to like other juvenile halls besides like the ones down here. So yeah. it's cool. I mean, not that it's cool, but it's, it, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's nice to know that there is other um, yeah. juvenile halls besides like the ones down here in Southern California. Yeah, these are we, big ones down here in LA are the big ones and shit, you know. Like, okay, you know, those like are kind that. of smaller. I mean, I'm yeah, sure they're they all the same. The, um, south of the Southwest, they hold them. Um, like, if you're being charged as an adult, that's what they can send you. Okay. In Riverside, you know. Yeah. Ah. So, yeah, but that yeah, was cool. I mean, shit. Um, when I first went in there, I was kind of like, I'm not allowed. I was nervous. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, didn't, I didn't have a nickname. I didn't have a nickname yet. So, I went in there with no nickname. I, I was claiming the hood. I was in, jumped in. So, I went in there like. It went hard. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a nickname. So, I was like, what's up? Well, they would bang on me. I was like, what's up? I would say my hood, and, but I wasn't having a nickname. Like, oh shit! What did you say? I'm prospecting for the hood. Like, what's up? I'm, I'm banging. Yeah. Ah, yeah, you know. So okay, okay. It was that type of vibe, and then uh, um, I I did only did two weeks for that for the domestic violence. I got out, and uh, I remember getting out. And I, my head was like, you thought you were the f yeah, coolest. Yeah. That is so terrible that we thought, think that way, huh? I, was, I thought I was the shit, you know, like America, me, fuck, watch dun, out, dun, dun, yeah. dun, dun. <laughs> you hear the music in the background. <laughs> I'm walking and shit, and um. Yeah, I mean, it just escalated from there and shit. Uh, that was a starting point. Yeah. That was your starting point. How many times did you go to juvenile hall? I went to juvenile hall four times. And I went to uh, boot camp once and uh, group placement once. Oh, uh, so you you did do all of uh, did all of these did all of these times you going to juvenile hall was it for different things? Yeah, it was for different things. So yeah. tell me about each time. What were your um, what, what 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 were your charges? So the first my first like my camp program I I got when I was uh, um, fourteen right so. It was for a saw with a deadly weapon. So basically, um, the tagging crew that I was from before, right? Once I became from a, a neighborhood in Elsinore, um, the one of the main heads from the tagging crew went and crossed me out. Right? So me being young and, and thinking I have to prove something and... and you know I mean, I mean, well, no tagging crew should be, no tagging guy should be like right? crossing out a guy yeah, yeah. from so, a so, gang. So, That's so, like terrible. Yeah, so I had a, I went, I went. <laughs> oh <and> no! <laughs> I, yeah, I went, I went and and, 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 and wait, without my homies telling me, I was like, you know what? This is again. This was my boy, the homie that crossed me out. We oh, were, we he was were hating because like, you got into the hood. Yeah, huh? and he was like, nah, you gotta like, you know that type of shit. So so. I paid this. I remember I paid this fat girl five dollars for gas money, and I was like, "Hey, why she gonna be a fat girl though?" She's a little poquita, you know what I mean? No, she's that like, is so not nice. I mean, she's she's a little on the thick side. Okay, she's, you know what I mean? But, but she, I paid her five bucks for gas money, and I told her like, "Hey, can you drive me to the homie's pad?" She drove me to the homie's pad, and um, I got out and I stabbed him. I stabbed <gasps> him like three times and shit. That's why you went to jail. That was my camp program when I was fourteen. Yeah, yeah. You were yeah. pissed. Yeah, I was, I was, it was, yeah, it was like more like I wanted to prove something to my hood and, and the homie's like, hey, like I'm, I'm dedicated and I'm no longer from this, but that was the homie, but he crossed me out and it was no, That's like, kind of how it goes, you know? Yeah. So, you know, so when you went to Juvenile Hall, obviously this was like a bigger, a bigger case. Um, yeah. What did they charge you for? I mean, they charged you for like, what was your charges? It was assault with a deadly weapon and GBI and, um. I went to my core fitness, uh, um, the fitness hearing, like um, where they see if you're fit to, to get tried as an adult, and they tried me as a juvenile. So luckily that time I got tried as a, as a juvenile. Oh, good. And I got a little, I got an eight month program. I went to boot camp. Um, How was boot camp for you? That shit was, it was, it was cool because um, 
I learned a lot about myself that I like structure, you know, like I, I, I work well in structure, like, you know, somebody like certain things to do, like. Maybe, I understand maybe. what you mean. So I, yeah, it was cool. Like I, after that, it, it made me, I wanted to be in the Marines. I wanted to be like, join the army and shit. But, oh. Yeah, that shit never happened, you know, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're unindicted. I'm yeah, sure it yeah, didn't yeah, happen, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So what would you say was like the craziest thing you saw in your juvenile experience? Um, craziest, craziest, craziest. You already see some crazy shit, huh? Like riots, probably. We, Your we experience cracked off some the, riots. Yeah, yeah. I, we cracked off some riots with the um, with the other side, with the um, with the black people, blacks. I don't know. <laughs> 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 the black people, not the black. I mean, it, it, everybody understands. If you know, everybody gets it. Yeah. Um So tell me how you felt, because you're young. Yeah. You're you're young. You're a minor when this is happening, and obviously, you know, it's kind of different. From being in adult prisons and stuff yeah. like that, so do how, like how what's the difference? Like, do you guys just fight? Like, how does it work? Yeah, there was no weapons involved. So in basically, just kind of like it's a big fish, rumble. Yeah, it's a big rumble and shit. Uh, um, we cracked that off in the basketball court right there in Riverside in uh, uh, Group Three. I was in Group Three, and uh, so when I get there, uh, um, all the homies, I, I'm I've been tall for my age, like most, like from fifteen to sixteen. I grew, got a little growth spurt, you know. And I go to juvenile hall, and the people, uh, the kids my age, the homies my age, they're like five four, like five five, and they're like, "Hey, fool, we're about to crack some f shit off right now," because these 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 more f crack tears, you know. They, uh -huh. um, I guess one of them was rapping, and in the middle of the rap, they 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 this the 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 suit, you know. Mm -hmm. So so, of course. And, and the homies were all pumped up, like, "Hey, fool, we're gonna get this shit cracking." Like, and you thought up? you're all cool. All yeah, tall. I'm like, "Hey, look, for this." Uh, <laughs> I was like, look, let me quarterback this shit. I'm a quarterback it. Like, um, I was like, let me be the only Mexican playing basketball with them. I'm going to wait till I get fouled and I'm going to crack one of them. And then you fools just jump in. And oh, it so went, you started it off. Yeah, and it just went, it went just like that. It was, uh, I got fouled. And I was like, hey, homie, you're a bitch. And I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. He was just boom. And all the little homies just started jumping in. Like, boom, boom, boom. But at the time, you know, that's like something like kill time and shit. Like, I understand. It's, 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 it's fun. And I guess it's not fun, but. It was fun. At the moment, it yeah, was fun. Moment, you know, you got to, you know, it, at it the moment, fun. it was fun. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um. So that was like, that was like one of your, that was like the second time you're saying that you went in. Yeah, that was my second time. You know, what was your third time? Third time was for a gun. It was um, my homie. Okay, so I was already on probation. And I remember my probation officer, she does random sweep or like she searches mm -hmm. my room and shit. So one of my boys, we had uh, slept over my pad. We were off the night before, so we slept over, and he left his gun in my right underneath my mattress. And shit. So when my probation came, she found it. And uh, I got violated. Well, yeah, and, obviously. And I went to group home for that. And fucking, Tell me about group homes. Um, I went to this place called Trinity. It's right there in Yucaipo. It was, it was uh, separated in dorms. It was like the Raider dorm, the Brother dorm, and the Gemini dorm. It was just. Do you get to wear your own clothes? Yeah, yeah, you get it. You bring in like your own property from the streets and everything. And, like, and throughout your juvenile, you know, all these experiences, are you going mm -hmm. in and out as a juvenile? Was your mom, was your family there for you? My mom has been there, um, shit, throughout the whole juvenile time, throughout the whole prison time. Like, she's been there rocking with me solid. Like, so it's always mom, huh? Always, always mom, regardless always mom. to this day. Like, I mean, she tells me, you know, I mean, that she's fed up and all that, but she's still like, she says, huh? Damn, and it's just, fuck. Yeah, so like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, certain things are unfortunate situations. No, of oh, course, yeah. you know, I, I, I understand. Yeah, and obviously. Just, that's the worst for me. That was the worst. Uh, um, the worst part of getting locked up in juvenile hall was making that phone call to my mom. To your mom. I would be bawling. I would be like holding in tears already. Like when when I'm like, fuck, I gotta tell her I'm in jail again. Like, I know. I'll be like, mean. hey, mom, I'm. And she, you know, me instant tears. I hear, and I was like, man. Uh, yeah, what I care. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. and, but. Um, yeah. what would you say was the nicest thing you saw or experienced in your juvenile years? Um, I would say the staff, the staff were real supportive of, of, you know, especially once you've been there for like a year or two fighting your case in juvenile hall and you grow bonds with, 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 with these staff members and, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They look at you like a kid and, you know, so, so they'll look out for you, bring you like burritos. I used to get hooked up like burritos and 
takis and fucking sodas and all that shit, you know. Because you behave well and you know how to carry yourself, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think that matters a lot, you know, like the way you yeah. carry yourself is how you're going to get treated. Yeah. You know? Did you fight a lot? Yeah, I fought a, um, I fought a good time, a good amount of times and shit. Um, one time, here's a funny story. I did it. Uh, um, now we're talking about staff. Um, there was a staff member. There was a skinhead that had disrespected her. She called, he called her a Mexican bitch. <gasps> so she, I remember she came to me and my boy Rascal, and uh, Rascal from the Desert Empire, and um, she's like, "Hey, I got anything you guys want to eat if you guys take off on." And then uh, Rascal looked at me. He's like, "You got this one? For I got that. I had the next the last <laughs> one." And she was like, "Shoot it!" You know what I mean? I was like, "I got it." Like, uh, uh. she's like, "What do you want?" I was like, "Pen Express with a pink lemonade." And she's like, "All right, got you." The pink lemonade. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah, we went to the volleyball court, and uh, I was like, "Hey, who you call me a bitch?" And I just started swinging on him and shit. And fuck, we started uh, getting down. Yeah. It's it's kind of sad though that um, staff does that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's not. I feel like it's not. It's not okay for her to even say that or him yeah. or whatever because that's your job. Yeah. Like obviously you're in this place and obviously these kids are gonna be disrespectful towards yeah. you. Like it's messed up. I mean, yeah. you got your pink lemonade yeah, and yeah. your Panda Express. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it is. Like as a as a juvenile being in there, like you don't think about that. You're just like, oh shit, she offered me some Panda Express for something that I would have done. Like no matter what. Yeah, you know, like not not just for the shits and giggles, but. Um, yeah, she came through with it and, um, and like I said, it was like a bond, like, um, sometimes they would just come through with like some chips, like, or one time I'm not going to say who, but he brought me a phone and he's like, look, go ahead, fool, like, boom. You know what I mean? I remember when I turned 18, when I was fighting my, my, my big case, uh, one of the staff members in there brought me some, uh, little, um, uh, some weed. You know, I was like, I was trying to like, uh, you're out trying to whisper, yeah, like, you're not trying to be like, you're not being recorded. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nah, nah. She brought me some weed and shit. And, uh, yeah, I'm dipped on. So, at what age did you catch your big case? Um, or and what did you get in trouble for? Tell me how it went down. How did you get arrested? Like, tell me the whole, the okay. whole everything. Um, so basically, I got arrested at 16 for um, a murder and two attempts, and basically, we just pulled up to a party. Uh, um, we went to an enemy's party and. Me and a few of the homies got out, lit some shit up. Somebody mm -hmm. got, somebody got killed, and two other people got shot. And you know, they 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 busted a whole group of us. It was four of us, and one of the homies, we well, not a homie, but he ended up telling, and three of us we ended up writing it out, and fucking. And you were sixteen years old. Yeah, I was sixteen. Yeah. And did you get charged as an adult? Yeah, right. There, how does yeah. that process go? Like, how do they determine if you should be charged as an adult or not? So you go through a, what, what was called a fitness hearing. So you will still go to your first court day, I believe. Um, you go to juvenile court. You go to your juvenile court. You see your juvenile judge, and um. I don't know the criteria exactly what mm -hmm. what they go off of as far as like um how they, they they determine like okay we're gonna charge this guy as an adult I just know maybe the severity of the case or something you know but um yeah they they they, they direct filed me that's what it's called direct filed me and the next court dates were in the county jail so they would transport me to the county jail. And, oh okay so you yeah. would be in juvenile hall and then they would pick you up mm -hmm. you and your crimeys. Because they were my, younger? No, my crimes were older. They were already in the county. Oh, yeah, so you were the youngest. youngest. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Up. So you would go to the uh, you would go to um, court. Yeah. With they would pick you up from juvenile hall and take you to adult court. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And how long did you fight that case for? Two years. Two, oh two, wow. Yeah, two and some change. It was like a, um, two and two months, I think. Oh, that's that's a long time. Yeah, that was a long time. I was um. I think I, I felt a little bit of, when I signed for my deal, I felt a little relieved, you know, like, okay. I'm sure. So what did, uh, what did you, uh, sign to? Like, what did you get sentenced to? It was a, a okay. So they separated our case. My, one of my, my crime is he ended up taking 80 to life. He, <gasps> they separated his case and he, he got 80 to life and, um, he came back from trial and let us know, Hey, I lost trial. So when it was our turn, we were getting me and the, and, and the other homie was, we we're in the, same case together 
it was getting ready to go to trial, they offered us a deal. Like, hey, it's a package deal. Like, uh, you you guys can sign 15 right now, you know? And I didn't I didn't think about it. I was like, fuck, shoot it, you know? Like, I see. Better than, like, yeah, cause 100 years. You see a lot of homies coming into the pod, you know, in the day room. Like, what, they get broken off or they get long stretches or they get, like, life sentences. They, they take it to the box, they lose, you know? Yeah. And at the time, I think the, the Riverside County was... They weren't playing with, with any type of gang activity, any type of gang violence. So they were they're chipping people off with a lot of uh, long sentences and um, yeah, shit. I, um, I I signed my deal right there. We were wait, I was waiting on my crime to sign it because he was kind of hesitant because he he had a daughter and he was kind of like oh, f-, you know he he had he felt he had action of beating the case, you know. So he was kind of going back and forth with it in his head and uh, um, yeah, he ended up signing. He's like you know what, f- on. so. We ended up signing it went through and um they brought it all three of us back. Um my homie Happy, me and the other homie, and they brought us all back together for the victim impact and pretty much it just gives What's a victim a, impact? It's like a uh it gives the family a a, a turn to share something, you know, the victim's family to get okay. up there and, and pretty much they just went up there and bashed us, you know, like hey, you, uh, yeah. you know, and, and it's understandable, you know, they just lost a loved one, so but one thing I could remember was like, uh, the the victim's grandma got up there and, and she's the only one that didn't talk shit. She didn't say nothing. She was just like, hey, you know what? I hope you guys go in there and find God. I hope you guys do good. And, you know, and I just took it like a, uh, like what my grandma would say, you know? So yeah. I didn't, I didn't, like, I didn't look at her no type of, like, I was just like, damn. I looked at her with respect. I was like, damn. Put it. Yeah, I even put my head down, you know, because I feel a little ashamed, you know, because yeah. it's like. You know, it lady. worked. Yeah, it uh, worked. Yeah, and it, it it didn't take her harsh words to make you feel shame. Nah, nah. You know, sometimes it doesn't take harsh words. Yeah. You know, you gotta say the correct words, and it'll make a person feel how you want them to feel. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. Did you guys get caught like in the scene? Red-handed. Ah. Red-handed. Yeah, okay. Red-handed. So um, you you were in on the run. You weren't in it. Like it was just happened. Nah, it yeah. Happened and yeah. and and there was. Literally a DUI stop right down the street. Ugh. So he heard the shots. He called it in, and uh, by the time we bent the corner, it was already. They're on you guys. Yeah, and they're sworn. They, they got the identification. You know, four bald guys in the car, and it's just yeah, it over and yeah, super easy way. Super. I mean, it's just a giveaway. Yeah, it was red handed yeah. and shit, and um. Yeah, it's fucking Rain, a little bit ago you said you mentioned that um when you signed and they gave you your time, you felt relief. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, I mean you're going through you know the process of of, of fighting a life sentence and shit every court date, you know what I mean? You're hoping that your attorney comes to you with some good news, you know, like hey fucking they dropped this or they dropped that, you're gonna go so for two years, it's been like a, a little emotional roller coaster, you know, up and down, up and down. And it's like, you know, it, there was a death penalty uh, uh, involved in there, and then they took it off because we were minors. You know, we didn't meet the criteria for that, so it, they took that off. So it, in my head, I was like, F-, like the worst, the, the best I'm gonna get is is maybe 25 to life. So, you know, so you, the whole two years you go through that and then finally when when a little yeah. little light of, of, of in the at the end of the tunnel comes and you match that shit mm-hmm. you're like hell yeah like i'll take 15 and i even licked the pen i think when i was like let's, let's <laughs> yeah, get the show let's do it. You know? yeah. so it, it felt like that because uh i mean county sucks juvenile hall sucks like you know for sure just, i mean everything sucks yeah especially like having that shit over your head you know like like you're like you just want to get it over with yeah you don't know what's gonna happen yeah so it, you know it's like it's like telling telling the homie like, hey, you got a calentada coming, but I'm not gonna tell you when. You know, it's like <laughs> you just got that shit. Just coming. wait for it, yeah. yeah just, just wait, wait for it. it. They can come in a minute, dog. You know, <laughs> just wait so, for it. And that's the same feeling in my gut that I would I would have for those two years. Like that's a good way of you know putting I mean? it. So yeah. It was just it was, yeah, it was that. It was just for two years. So when I finally signed, I was kind of like, all right. So let, were you 18 or 17 when you signed? I was 18 when I finally signed. Yeah. Okay, so when you signed, did you yeah. go to prison right away? It took us two months, I think, uh, two months in the county, and then I left June. I landed in June in 2012. I landed in Wasco. That's yeah. when I got out. Yeah, so, so yeah, so I landed in D, D yard. 
and it was uh right there on the same yard with the bulldogs. It was a uh, split tier and shit. And fucking. I'm gonna take it a little back. So you were a minor and you were in Juvenile Hall. Mm-hmm. When you turned 18, they automatically transfer you to the county. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, because we have how how did you feel from that transitioning of the juvenile hall to the county? Because what county did you go to? Did you go to? Over I here? went to Southwest Detention Center, so I okay. went to Southwest Juvenile Hall to, and it's literally right in the same parking. Oh, lot. okay, okay. So they just put me in a van and then shackled me up and just took me like right there. Okay, so let's circle back to your juvenile hall. Mm-hmm. Um, when you were in juvenile hall, what was the craziest fight or what was the craziest thing you saw? The craziest, okay, I got two for you. I got the, the craziest thing I saw was somebody get stabbed with a pencil while, while they're while they're doing their work in class. Yeah, some fool they, got hit in the, in, the, in the neck with a pencil. Oh my god! Yeah, some enemy shot. It was an enemy shot right there, and fucking uh, some fool just didn't. So tell I guess them. it does really happen, huh? With the pencils? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You get stabbed with pencils in there and shit. But now the craziest fight that I've been in was uh, a butt naked in the shower, like. <sighs> Yeah. Was so. this when you were a minor? Yeah, when I was a minor. Yeah, they, <gasps> Tell they, me more about that. Not shower, that I care, you know, but it's just like they, scary. They shower you in, in, in... Okay, so in Riverside Juvenile Hall, is 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 thaws. It's like... And I'm talking about it's like 20, like... Doo, 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 right? So I'm in there and I'm getting ready for shower. Okay, so there's this, <laughs> this dude from 18th Street that lived in my hood. I had caught him in a... I, I took his iPod when I was out there in the streets, right? I don't remember this dude, so when he remembered me and he was already pumping it up, I'm the new guy. He's already been there for a little bit, so he pumped up the whole. I'm gonna get this fool right now, like. So I'm in there brushing my teeth and I'm in my underwear. I'm getting ready to jump in the shower, so I finally fucking boom. I jump in the shower and this (laughs) is walking in, and he just starts taking off on me. Boom, 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 and we start fighting. Did you slip? Yeah, no, we both <gasps> slipped. We fucking boom. We were f- it, it, it became a fight of, of us bumping each other's heads on the floor. Like, <gasps> boom, 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 boom. Like, oh, no. And then I remember the... Like some <laughs> movie sh- Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was just like not even a fight. It was more like a... F- you know what I mean? You're trying to bang your yeah, heads. Yeah, dog. Oh, that it still just, sucks. It just, it's fucked up. And uh, um, since I was a new guy, the staff, um, hey, we, we call him Mr. V. You know what I mean? He kind of was more on his side because he was there longer, so... I caught the, the the knee to the neck, you know what I mean, and fuck. Oh, so, so he that stop resisting, you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but that was the craziest fight that I've been in the shower, but naked and shit. But yeah, that is kind of intense. Yeah, because the pepper spray gets everywhere and fucking on you your know body. I mean? the and fucking everywhere. You know? What about camp? What was the craziest thing you saw at camp? In the back, so there was um. And, and, and our camp was, um, it was split by wings. So it was the green wing and the gold wing. I was in the green wing. So it was a long hall and it had um, rooms boom, 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 on both sides. And come like on the halfway of the, of the thing, of the, of the hall, there was like a, like a closet that stuck out like boom, boom. And that was a blind spot. So that blind spot, that's where everybody caught phase. That's where everybody fought. So. If I had a problem with the homies or it's like, hey, you go to the back. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and all there is is, is a, a, you know those 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 mirrors that the, the staff use? Mm-hmm. They're like circles. Mm-hmm. All the way in the back. So somebody will keep pointing and be like, go ahead. I'm like, gosh, you know, fucking. So we'll go into one of the rooms and just start locking like. Bum, 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 bum. That, that was just like the thing to do. Yeah, it was just like, all right, get it out of the way. Did, Boom, did the staff good. know about this place? Well, Somebody in the one of the, the the kids ended up getting beat up pretty bad, and um, they didn't know how it happened. You know, they're like, well, "How the fuck it happened?" Because they're so not, no he ended up this. telling them like, "Oh, because well, of this, you guys can't see." But oh, he told. You know I'm sure everybody's told. Yeah, you know they know. So, but they ended up taking those closets down. Oh yeah, because yeah, so. it was like super hazards for them. Like yeah. could have got them in super trouble. Yeah, but I didn't that not um camp was pretty chill, you know. We marched, we fucking uh we um I still have pictures. I'll show you pictures on so fly. Was, uh, <laughs> you have pictures. I have um of me and my fatigues, you know, my army fatigues and shit. And uh yeah, we just go we we went to East LA, we did the um was it the Rose Parade, I think. We marched. Oh wow. Yeah, we did a um we did banning the stagecoach. We did a. Um, so you guys are in camp, juvenile hall camp, yeah. and they bring you out to march and do these yeah. parades. 
I mean, yeah. it's kind of cool, but then it's kind of like up, huh? Yeah. Like people are seeing like, oh, look at these fools. Yeah. The crazy thing is that everybody thinks we're in the army. They're all thanking us for service and shit. Yeah. yeah. We're like, oh, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Gracias a ti. Yeah, all right, you're welcome. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Salute to him and everything. Yeah, but nah, camp. So uh, it was it was it was a cool experience. Different experience, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it was um, it was cool. Um, I like the structure of it, the, the army. You know, I mean all that shit. I know you said that earlier. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to um, you adjusting from juvenile hall to adult jail. Like, I mean, um. Was yeah, it was a, it was a little uh, transition, you know. You I'm sure because there. it's completely different. Yeah, and um, I was more I was uh, uh asking a lot of questions, you know. Did they get bothered or like the older homies or whoever, however it works? Yeah. Did they get bothered by you asking questions or nah, were they? they were. They happy were, that you they were, were happy. Will- yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, they were like, uh, um, well, you know, I'm young and I'm I'm still have that mentality like, oh, I'm active, so I'm I'm asking them questions like of scenarios, you know, hey. How do I go about it if this or how do I if I get disrespected in prison or how do I go about it? You know, hmm. I'm like I'm a kid. I'm still of trying to like I'm trying to go about it the right way without you know getting in trouble. So I'm I'm asking all those type of questions and and, and not even in trouble by the cops. You mean just in no, trouble? No, by the homies. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so that's the, the that's the type of questions I was asking. Like you know, like hey, fucking, well, what if this happens? What if this happens? You know, so, you survived it though. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I you end up. A lot of the times that clecha that they give you does not fit into what you're going through in your life, you know, like it does it. Like a lot of times the older dudes they, they 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 speak out of their side of their neck and then you know what I mean? They tell you to do things that they were not willing to do themselves. And mm. that's where a lot of young youngsters get in get in trouble when they hit that or they, instead of just they, like staying back and observing and taking yeah, it day by day. Yeah. Wanna go kinda of, people kinda of wanna like just rush in and just yeah. be in the mix instead mm-hmm. of just being in a mix, but not being in a mix yeah. unless you have to be. Yeah. You uh, know? Yeah. Just do your time and f- be yourself. You know, like, just, that's the b- most honest and genuine um, advice that I got when I was, just be yourself, dog. Like, don't try to think you're this or don't try to think you're that. You know what I mean? Just be yourself. Be yourself. Yeah. So, you're 18. You got sentenced to mm-hmm. 15 years. You said, how, yeah. how long did you do 15 years, right? Yeah. I did 12. Out 12. Of those okay. Years. Um, and you get, you get sent in, you, and you go to prison. Where um, did you go first? Um, reception, law school. And how was that for you? Because you haven't been in prison. How did it look when you were in the bus? Like, you know, like the sounds, like when it, when you just barely got there. That Tell me all of crazy. that. It was like a, um, like for me, it was like uh landing on a new campus, you know, like a new high school campus and shit. Like, you gotta meet new friends, you meet new, like, you know what I mean? All that, but in prison, it's a little more, the stakes are a little higher, you know? Like, so I got there and, um, same shit in the county, everybody introducing themselves and you let them know. Yeah, had a name now, though. Yeah, now, yeah, now I was officially, <laughs> now, now I was official, now I was officially jumped in and shit, yeah. So, so, you know, I had a little, I had something and shit. So I went in there and, uh, um, yeah, it was, um, it was different. I'll tell you that much, it was more, Different in what form? Um, you could feel the, the the tension, you know. It was in, in I landed in, in D yard when it was cracking off with the Moreno, so it was you could just feel it in the air, you know. It was just like homies more on point, and, and, and you know what I mean. Everything more respectful. Everything was very respectful. It was not like the county, you know. The county we clown the homies, you know what I mean. So right here, uh, you just feel the tension and shit, and. Uh, you hear the alarms, you see the removals, and you see what was cracking and shit. So what is the remove? Oh, like what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, like like people getting, you Hurt. know what I mean? Yeah, get, getting stepped off the yard or fools getting beat up off the yard, you know, shit like okay. that. So, so um, you start seeing that, and then it settled in my head, like okay, it's real. This is, yeah, it's real. This is where the big boys are, you know. So you gotta. I fell in line, you know. I fell in line. So yeah, they did, did that. So. You were in the reception for how long? I did three months there, three months, and then uh, they shot me out to Susanville. Susanville, so Where's, um, how was that for you? Like, was it the what was it? Did you like what was the difference? Oh, it was uh, reception um, and like you getting to. Susanville. I finally got to the main line and I, I got my TV because the whole time there we were on lockdown, so it was at reception. At reception, yeah, we're okay. on lockdown because it cracked off, and so I, I couldn't even make canteen. 
And those no. three months that you were there. Yeah, three months. Oh, that now. sucks. Yeah, it was bad. I, I lost it, so much. I was, you know what I mean? Like 160 something. Dog. And I was like the little, like, I've never been that, that way in my life. I always been stuck to like 200s. Oh, because so, you were hungry. And so you yeah, were just working I, out. Yeah, I was starving. I was over uh. here busting me down and shit. I was working me out and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, <laughs> it was cool. Finally, uh, when I hit Susanville, Susanville is a, um, it snows, it's up north. Mm -hmm. It's like 20 minutes by the Reno border. I think. So, yeah, we got there. The northerners were there, you know, and, and everybody from reception doesn't know what's going on in, on this yard. You know? Oh, okay. Because every yard is different. So as far as like the, the relationships with different uh, group segments. Mm -hmm. So we're like, hey, fool, like, is it on site with the northerners or what? Like, and everybody in the bus is talking. And, uh. We're like, well, f me. Like, I don't know. We'll find out when we get there, you know. And then, so once we get there, the Northerners felt it because uh, they put us in the cage. And um, yeah, it was uh, um, three Northerners and it was like 15 homies. Like, just all of them were just bundled up. Like, and we're talking, like, hey, and they could feel it. We're whispering. So they come up to us, and like, hey, bro, like, we program on this yard. It's good. Like, just wait, 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 wait till you guys hit the land and you guys will see, you know, like, we program on this yard. It's cool. Hey, you're up a wing on the yard right now. Yeah, yeah, nah, <laughs> hey, well, everybody like there. You know, you got you got those homies that are like, like nah, nah, they're lying, dog. Like, but at the end of the day, you gotta wait and see. Like, all right, let's fill it out. Like, mm -hmm. you know, plus it's fifteen of us, three of them. Like, so they came and they they're like, hey, um, they gave us a little rundown of, of the program in Susanville. Like, hey, yeah, now nah, we we program here, dog. Like, uh, um, you guys got your bars, we got our bars. You guys got your your tables, we got our tables, and um. For the mall is mutual, you know, it's, it's, it's a mutual respect. I kind of heard that a lot. Yeah. I've heard a lot. I've heard that by a lot of, you know, guys that I've interviewed yeah. that um, they, you guys, that Northerners and Southerners sometimes do program together. Yeah. I feel like it's like more animosity just with the humans out here in the world that never even been in prison. That yeah. talk about, yeah. oh, I'm from the North and I'm from the South, like type of vibe. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, hearing it from you and, you know, you obviously done a lot of time and yeah. people are watching, like, it's not how the real world makes it seem sometimes. Nah, not even, um, shit. Yeah, we program with Northerners. I, I program with Northerners on the Bay, in the Pelican Bay, too. And uh, uh, it's just certain yards at, at a certain time. Um, it just depends on the time of the year or whatever the heck. Happens, yeah, yeah, happens, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? March Madness or something, you know, so... Someone's just cranky and it's yeah, just what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, those like sporadic moments and shit. That so, shit um, how many different prisons did you go to in your? I just stuck to those right there. Oh, um, so just two. Just three. three. I ended up pulling from Old Folsom, but I started on level three. I got stuck in level four, and then I dropped my points finally after six years to a level three, and then uh, I pulled from Old Folsom. And it was so you were in Susanville for mm -hmm. how many years? Um, from 2012 to 2014. And what would you say was yeah. the craziest thing you saw in those years that you were there? I mean, typical prison violence. Okay. You know what I mean? Typical prison Nothing violence. out of the ordinary. Nothing out of the ordinary. What fucking... was the nicest thing? Uh, what do you mean nicest thing? Nicest thing? The nicest thing that... All oh, spreads. Tell me about uh, spreads. Um, Shout right out to here? spreads, though. Yeah, no, right here in uh, in Susanville, uh, uh, the homies, you know, because we're up north, so for some reason, and I've never programmed down south on a uh, on an active yard down south, uh, only on active yards up north, but up north, the homies are more united, you know, so it's like every Christmas, I remember for sure, every Christmas, every holiday, every homie's birthday, we're spreading. Everybody's bringing some type of items out to the day room, we, everybody's bringing hot pots, and uh, you got, you know what I mean? Designated you can feel cooks. the love. Yeah, yeah, you know, everybody's That's like, nice. hey, bring your bowl, bring your bowl, bring your bowl. Like, boom, pull up, boom. And then, you know, somebody will bless it. Hey, fuck it. Southside spread on me. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, yeah you know. But but that's, that's, that's the nicest thing that I, I, I got to experience right there. At Susanville. Yeah, and then you Susanville. went to Pelican Bay. Pelican Bay, yeah. How long were you in Pelican Bay? And tell me about Pelican yeah. Bay. I haven't had anybody that's been in Pelican Bay that I know of. How, did did you know that you were? How did you first find out that you were gonna go to Pelican Bay? I got out the hole. I, I did my shoot term in, in Susanville, and um, I got out the hole. I was still with my homeboy Lazy, rest in peace, my homeboy Lazy. Uh, um, so we were sold up, and um, they they came to the window like, "Hey, Torres, uh, um, you're gonna transfer to to Pelican Bay," and I was like, "What the?" <gasps> f 
did you feel? Because got, uh, this I was, is I got like, scared. I was like, what the? You know what I mean? Se te bajó like, la azúcar. Yeah, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, because you hear stories, you know what I mean? And, and, exactly. This is and like. And Lazy's not helping. He's in the back pumping shit up. He's in the back like, hey, fool, like, lace your boots up, homie. It's soldier time. Like, you're going to. Like, fool, here, take this 128 hoop. Tommy, hoop that shit, dog. I was, like, oh, well, I was about to ask you. I'm glad you said it. I didn't even have to I ask like, you. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> made me a little Jolly Rancher and shit. Like, hey, take this shit. Like, trust me. What is me. a Jolly Rancher? Uh, just a paperwork. He just rolled up paperwork. You know, fuck okay, okay, okay. Just take it. Yeah, you know, and it looks good on the individual. You pull it up to the yard and like, boom. You know? Ah, so, okay. So yeah, you, you I, get to Pelican Bay. Mm -hmm. How are you? How are you? feeling within yourself i know you said you were scared um, you know like tell me I, I your started, emotions um you know what i mean i'm pumping myself oh like fuck it i got this homie like you know what i mean mm -hmm. like working out in the because uh, they sent me to orientation for like two weeks to try to find my bedding you know to um the right housing ah so you so, get orient you go to orientation so they could figure out what do you mean the right housing as far as like what well okay in the level fours they look at your case more closely because you're going to be spending a lot of time with another individual in, in the cell, you know? Okay. So it's not like they're going to be like, all right, you're south side, you're south side, they're going to sell you guys up. It's more like, okay, let's let's look at, you know what I mean? His like, behavior. His behavior or, or let's look at his uh, um, his education or let's look at his, uh, I don't like. Like so they could match. Of, yeah, exactly. You know? I get so, it. Yeah, I ended up uh, um, I ended up selling up with um, one of the OGs, OGs right there. He had just done 32 years in, in the shoe and got kicked out. Like, he was fresh two weeks out. How um, was that experience for you? It was, a, um, it was, a, it was cool. You know what I mean? It was a pleasure. It was, a uh, nice. I'm sure it was, I'm, I'm sure it was kind of like intense for you. Like, just like, oh man, this man, you know, like this man, you know, he just did 32 years they're, in the shoe. shoe like, and it's like, you know, he's used to being by himself probably. Yeah, and yeah. And then here comes this young man. I was 19, I believe, at the time. You know, and I come in and like, hey, what's up, little talker from Woo? Like, and he's like, yo, come the fuck down. Bro. Yeah, and he was just like, <laughs> say his name, you know, like, what's up? I'm like, very I'm calm, like, huh? Yeah, real cool, humble, you know? So I was like, oh, shit. I'm not very calm, like I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 and, and seeing this, like, when I got there, he had everything already. Talking about two TV, she players, CD stacked up, gain a hygiene, gain a suit, gain a food, and I was just like, Oh shit. You know what I mean? And he's telling me his story. He's like, Yeah, I just got out two weeks ago from the shoe. I was like, Oh, gee, uh, how long did you do in the shoe? He's like, 32 years. I was like, Fuck. Wow. I was like, I'm gonna go to my tough bunk and shit. You know, just kick it. <laughs> Yo, call me if you need yeah, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, Nah, but I wear. You he's learned. Real cool. Yeah, I learned to work around his program and fucking. Uh, oh, so you worked around his program? Yeah, yeah. You know it's, I mean? it's, it's funny, right? Yeah, you know? He's, he's a little older. He was down, downstairs and shit in the bottom bunk and all. Uh, He's real cool, real real loving, real. His thing was education. Told all the homies. That's how I got into college because of him. You know what I mean, so a lot of a lot, there's a lot of like stigmatization. Uh, you know, Pelican Bay gets stigmatized and shit. Like, oh, it's violent. It's, don't get me wrong. Like all level fours, they got their moments. And Obviously, shit, you know? it just, but, it's just but right human. now, um, at least I can't say right now. But before I left, there was um, there's a lot of college. You know, a lot of people, you know, getting a lot of degrees. Because you, know? you did that program. Yeah. Were you there when the Kim Kardashian? Was Are you talking about a um, what's it called? Uh, yeah, because Kim Kardashian I got went. Into it. I got into that program after Kim. Once I found out Kim Kardashian, I was like, oh, let me sign up. You know, because Snapper. Yeah, yeah, Snap was on there. Yeah, um, he he actually spoke. Defy. It was called Defy. Yeah, was he Defy? spoke with yeah. Kim, oh, like on a one on one. Yeah, yeah, crazy, he was in huh? A, um, that program was like a, for entrepreneurs. Well, you come up with a business pitch and you pitch it to these people like Kim Kardashian and, and famous people come and, and rich people like millionaires. And um, the top three, I believe, they get sponsored and then, you know, I mean, you get action to, to actually start your own business. That's crazy. So, yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Nah, Pelican Bay was a. Um, Has you know, a lot they, of. Yeah, they, 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 Pelican Bay is known for like violence and all the bad shit, but. The good stuff up there, like College of the Redwoods is up there. And, uh, um, you know, that's the reason I, I'm, like, 15 units shy of getting my degree because Pelican Bay, you know. If I would have never landed in Pelican Bay, I would have never gotten into education and, and, you know, trying to start something new and shit. So 
crazy, huh? Sometimes the way life takes yeah. you for you to see certain things. Like, man, if, what if, you know, like you probably would have yeah. never even thought about school if you would have never even gotten busted. Yeah. Because of the lifestyle, the, mm-hmm. our lifestyle, you know? Yeah. So tell me, tell me more about Pelican Bay. Um, about your experience, obviously. Let me see shit. Um, what was the craziest thing there? I mean, f- besides fighting, prison violence, fucking that's people all. dying and fucking all that shit. But I, I can tell you this: uh, the craziest thing that that from my experience was I was still up with my boy Cholo from West Covina. Shout out, he's a lifer, and that was my dog. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, we would get drunk on White Lightning, and uh, one time, uh, um. He's from SGB, you know, and I'm from the IE, so we got drunk and he started set tripping on a tear. I started set tripping on a tear and it was just, <laughs> it was, you know what I mean? It, it was, was all like, bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the next day we got pulled to the side and shit, but that was my boy. You guys got in trouble? You guys had, you guys got broken off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got broken off. <laughs> little extra and shit. We had to do something else, but that was a, uh, that was the craziest thing, like, cause I fed into it, you know what I mean? Like, I was drunk, drunk, yeah, and I was just like, shut the fuck up, who like? Mm-hmm. So I have of it, but yeah, that's my boy and shit. Yeah. What was the nicest thing there? Um, people giving their TVs to homies that don't have no TV. That's fortunate. Oh. Yeah. So that is very nice. Like if I'm about to pro, I'm finding somebody in my section. Like, all right, the homie ain't got shit. Here's his TV. Here's a radio. Here's fucking some clothes. You know what I mean? Or, or what I did, I, I spread it out. Like, so all the homies and shit, little something, just an item, you know. So. That's something that uh, you pick up, you know. So, yeah, comes with comes with that. I would say it comes with the the prison culture, as far as like um, homies, you know, south side and shit. Like, we're not no somos codos, pues, you know. Like, mm-hmm. we're very giving. Like, we embrace the homies and shit. Like, if you need something, like here you go. Sometimes you don't take advantage of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because uh, sometimes um there wouldn't be no Florida TV. So if there's a cell with two TVs, it's like. Hey, the homie just pulled up. Can one of you let him borrow the TV? And it's like, all right, here, boom. You know, you got like four or three months till you try to get your TV, or we're gonna help you get another TV. Ah. You know, so that's the nicest thing. That is seen that is very American nice. Day, yeah. No, for sure, that is super nice. Yeah. What is the saddest thing you saw in Pelican Bay? Family members dying, and shit. My boy, uh, um. I don't know. If he's a, I'm not gonna say his name, but no, you don't need to my say boy. His name. Yeah, I was gonna give him a shout out, but um, the homie I was held up with him for like two years right there too, and uh, um, he lost. I'm talking about everybody. He lost his like three sisters, two brothers, <gasps> like boom, 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 nephews, and he was just taking them on the chin, dog. And I was like, fool, like you could cry, homie, like and, you know, it's just it's okay to cry. Prison doesn't give you the right environment to to. You know what I mean? To to go through those emotions and because there's always one mean one that doesn't care and will yeah, take advantage. Huh? I mean, nobody else cares. Like everybody else got their own problems. Problems, you know? so yeah. Nobody gonna be. So you kind of gotta like roll with it and shit. That yeah, dude, take your little time and then just acknowledge it and just keep it pushing. You know, yeah, because I lost some people while I was in there too, and it was just. I'm not a lie. You know what I mean? I shed some tears and shit for 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 some people in there, but. Then the day was just like, all right, put it in the back. Yeah, it happened. Boom, boom. Let's keep pushing, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, that was the saddest thing I seen um, was my, my Sally losing. He lost like, damn, down here, six fucking uh, family members in like two years, wow. cancer, people getting like, yeah, things yeah. like that, you know. So, Did your mom go visit you in the Bay? Mm, she visited me once, you know. Because it was far. Yeah, it was like an 18 hour drive, I think. So. Yeah, she came once and then. Uh, did you have pin pals? Girlfriends? Yeah, I had a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. how did you get them? <laughs> um, homies, like. <laughs> I remember, um, like, the homies, the homie would be writing to his lady and shit or talking to her, and I'll be like, hey, hit her with, with a friend and shit. And sometimes the, the his lady will be with the friend right there on the phone. So I'll be like, hey, let me talk to her, you know? And mm-hmm. I try to, like, Try to, you know, game around. Did you get shit. visits from like girls? Yeah, yeah I got ah, a few visits. Oh, yeah. nice. I got a few visits, yeah. Okay. I got a few visits and fucking up. Uh, I almost got married. Oh. You know what I mean? Almost <laughs> got married in there. Almost. almost. I was pressing the issue. I was pressing the issue. I was trying to. Because why the damn visits, huh? Yeah, I was trying to get them visits. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, you know, can you blame me that 12 years? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but nah, yeah, I was pressing the issue and it didn't go down like that. I mean, it's good it didn't happen. Yeah, no, it's good it didn't yeah, happen. It's yeah, it's good it didn't happen. Yeah, but. Yeah. Um, tell me about when you found out, how did you find out when you were going to come home? Um, I was in Folsom. This is when um, CDC had changed its percentage. Oh, wait, so from wait, so from Pelican Bay, you went to Folsom? Yeah, I dropped my points, you know. Oh, so you were you were doing good. Yeah, I was doing good for the last two, three years in Pelican Bay. That's when I got into college. And, and, and the first, I want to say like the first three, four years, I was still kind of like, you know what I mean? It's a wobbler, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like I was still yeah. fucking up and, and, and doing all that crazy shit. But the last three years of my turn, or, or the last three years I was in Pelican Bay, I buckled down and, and really went full time in, into college and uh all these programs that knocked down time in my uh, in my sentence. So oh good. Yeah, I was doing that. So you dropped your points and then you went to you said old Folsom. Old Folsom, yeah. Um, is there are the prisons different? Like, do they look different? Like yeah, they look way different. Yeah. Tell me. So and and any level four one eighty design is um it's kind of like a U right, but every I want to say every ten cells. Is a wall, boom, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With a with a with a door, a locked door. So and then it has A pod, B pod, C pod, D pod. So you just kind of go around. Yeah. So that's that's the 180 design, because it's 180, you know. So um, it gives the the tower the 180 fucking mm-hmm. view, so you can see everything. Everything. And all Folsom was five tiers, so it was. Just, oh, so it's up. Yeah, you go up, boom, and and they got the catwalk. You know, just how you see a, um, in the movies. American Me, right? That's that's that was old Folsom, I believe. Oh. It was either old Folsom or Chino, if I'm not mistaken, right? I think it was Chino. Yeah, but it was the same, the uh, similar design, the catwalk. So literally, I'll be like, I'll be on my tier, and then in my cell, and then the the hood, I'll be right there with the cameras at, just with it with his quarter, you know, walking. Mm. And I, I was on the fourth tier, so yeah, it was it was cool. It was it was different. Hot as hell right there. No, no, no type of like air conditioning, nothing like that. So you just right there in your boxers and fucking wet on you and you just on your bunk. Just. Like not even moving. Nah, you just fucking, You can't move. You move, you, you get got your little fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, nasty, yeah. it's nasty, but yeah. Um, since you, when you, when you dropped your points and you already went to that prison, um, did you know you were already going to come home or did you find out? And oh, fa- mm. at Folsom. Well, I had my uh, um, my earliest possible release date, the EPPR, and then um, but CDCR had just passed a new law where it changes your percentage, you know. So I went from eighty percent to sixty six. So it took CDC like it took them a few a few months to get it right, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. my day changed from it changed like four times, like boom, boom, boom. Oh. So I would call from my dress house like, hey, I'm I'm pro from this day. Mm. And my lady would be all excited, like, all right, cool, like, well, I'm going to pick you up. And then it'll change. Ah, oh, never mind. Oh, that you know, sucks. So, yeah, they played with my emotions, like, three times like that. And I was just, So at the end, I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to pro in some shorts and a white shirt. So yeah. um, when you were at the uh, Folsom, oh. was it, like, obviously it's prison, so it's still active yeah. and you're still behaving the way you're behaving yeah. because you have to. Mm. But um, you weren't the same anymore. What well, as far as um like you you were more on your shit like I'm gonna stay focused you weren't messing around anymore what you're it's what I'm at, what I'm saying kind of I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna be on one hundred with you um towards the end because okay Pelican Bay had no freedoms ah uh, okay oh Folsom had freedoms like phones okay. phones phones okay phone, like, mm-hmm. I was just and I was a porter so I was just. Buck wild, you know what I mean? I was okay, like, you're ha- you're just doing your thing. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, like you know what I mean? I'm out here all day, like in in Pelican Bay. I was only out an hour at a time. Oh, you know? so, so it was completely different. Completely different for me. It was, was the just, food different? Everything different? Nah, I think uh, um the all the menus in California State Prison they they are the all the same. Oh, now. okay, yeah. okay, okay. Nasty. They 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 cut down all the carbs and shit. So it was just. Nah, just yeah, that's just not gonna fill you up. Yeah, at all. No, <laughs> hell, you need to throw a soup in that motherfucker <laughs> to get yeah, full. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the craziest thing you saw there? In Old Folsom, um, because it's you, since it's more free, you're saying like I'm sure. Honestly, you know, like it's all the same shit. It's all the same shit. Yeah. Like, you're not gonna hear like unless you're in with like a sick motherfucker and 
that, that decapitated some motherfuckers. I know. Remember, I, don't, I, yeah, I, yeah, but, I don't even nah. think I could. I don't think I could interview one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but for the most part, I would say uh, uh, typical prison shit, you know okay. what I mean? That, yeah. Like, just typical prison shit, you know what I mean? That you, you become, you know what I mean? I guess used to that shit, but. Wait, so there was, there was, there wasn't as much, there was internet, but not like that, right? No, there was internet. 2012, yeah. I guess it was, right? 2012. No, no, no. Oh, in Old Folsom, I just probably Old Folsom 2021. Mm. 22, my bad, 22. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how long have you been out? Since 22 of April. Mm. Yeah, April. So you had all the phones. You were able to look at everything. Instagram, yeah, yeah. like everything. Yeah. Did you Did you have an Instagram? No, I had Facebook. I went straight to Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't even hip on Instagram or none of that. Like, uh, um, I was still trying to catch up on the music, like YouTubing. Uh, um, you know what I mean? All the music that was popping. And oh, shit, like, okay. So what did you them. What did you listen to while you were in there? A lot of Mozzie. I fuck with Mozzie. I like Mozzie. So okay. I was um, catching up on all, the, on all the new rap, you know, like RJ and all the, you know, I mean, the Chicago rap too. Like, I started catching up on the music. Pretty much that shit. Fucking talking to my girl. FaceTime. FaceTime was, was new. You it know was me? easier so, for you. Yeah, it was easier for, for us. Like, because it was during the COVID. So there was no visits. The visitation was, you know, I mean, canceled and all that shit. So, um, yeah, we got a FaceTime, FaceTime and shit. Wait, so you were there when COVID happened? I caught COVID in there. I was <gasps> shit put me down. Oh. Okay, so so you okay, so you're in there for all these years and then mm -hmm. you just like randomly this whole pandemic shit happens. Yeah, yeah. So how did they go about that? Tell me. They were lost. Folsom was lost. I was a porter and it was yeah, they were lost. It was it was bad. So but when you much, first heard, like how how were like, you feeling? Like, <gasps> I wasn't tripping. I was like, oh, you're cool. I didn't think it was going to hit me. I was like, nah, not hit me, dog. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, no way. I'm, I'm healthy. And then if it, it hit me and that shit put me down, like it put me like, couldn't move. I was on the bed. And I was like, oh, God, I think I got COVID, you know? So what, what, they were, what, what they were doing was if you got COVID, they'll move you and your celly to the fish, the, uh, the fish, uh, fish um, tanks. tanks. Yeah. So it was. So the fish tanks were full of COVID people. Yep, it was all COVID. Boom, all COVID. And then once your two weeks pass, then they'll switch you back out with another COVID guy. Boom, boom, boom. And we're porters, so keep in mind, these are five tiers. We got to self-feed all these motherfuckers. And it was a workout every time. I'm not going to lie. It was like a, they were slaving us in there. Like, you have to pick up these heavy-ass trays and carry them all the fuck up in, in, into uh, uh, the fifth okay. tier, fourth tier, third tier. You gotta rotate them all the way around. To so you have to everybody. carry them with your hands. You can't like push no, the car. No, you gotta carry them with a with a up, because they don't they don't have an elevator. So you gotta walk all the stairs. And oh. So if you're a porter, you're getting ready to work out. You know, like every morning, every 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 dinner, and once the porter will get sick, then they'll flop them out because the porters are gonna get sick. You know, they're everybody at everybody's sick. door. Yeah. yeah. So, so we were the first ones to get sick, and I got I got sick sick like. And I had the vaccine shot. That shit didn't help. You know what I mean? It put me down. I was, I lost my taste. I was. I still can't taste or smell. They didn't give us nothing. They didn't give us shit. They were just. Well, no, they, they, they didn't ever. Yeah, they just put us in a, they took our vitals every morning and. And, and you had like a super calentura and all that shit? Yeah, I was fucking dying. That shit felt, I felt got you. No, for I a feel... split second, I was like, damn, homie, I'm almost making my, like the end. My term and this oh shit Spencer this is how okay. I'm this is how I'm gonna end my fucking like, I'm gonna die on COVID I, if I pull no up. I was like man fuck <sighs> that shit super honey. scary yeah so um for a split second I got like nervous about it I was like fuck no that shit blew. that felt horrible when I got sick when we got sick it was more like of anxiety if shit, anything I just got for me COVID like fucking two weeks ago three weeks ago mm -hmm. again and you're here. Yeah, three, no, but I'm cleared. No. I'm cleared. I'm cleared. <laughs> yeah, I'm cleared. Yeah, my mom gave it to me. <laughs> gave me COVID. Okay, so let's let's go back. So you you got COVID in there. You were down. Yeah. Um, everything was just kind of a disaster. Mm -hmm. Um, how how did it start falling back into order? Like, did it just? Um, 
after everybody got sick. Mm. Everybody, like I'm talking about the whole tiers got sick. Everybody. And what about like the work, like the guards, like the COs? Like, they were getting sick too, yeah. Did were they like short on staff? Yeah, they were like, short on staff a lot of times. Did you, yeah. Were you guys like more locked down because there was like no staff? Oh no, well, we were locked down completely. Like nobody coming out of their cells on, only for emergency medical. And um yeah, every, everything was self feed, self feed, you're staying in your cell all day. And old Folsom was the hardest time that I could do in a cell because it's so small in there. Like two people cannot fit in there. They can't. It's just you know what I mean? It's just so small. So imagine being in there all day with fucking uh, just no. laying down, you're pretty much laying down on your bunk all day all watching day. TV, you know. So yeah, For like a whole a, year almost, huh? Yeah, what was it? It was like four months. It wasn't that long um Folsom got hit towards the end. Um yeah, but it was bad, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So you got your date and you were coming home. Yeah. How did you feel? I felt happy, nervous, excited, relieved, you know, fucking up. Uh, yeah, almost felt. Um, did you get picked up Yeah, there? My, my lady picked me up, yeah. She came pick me up. You met your lady in prison? Yeah, I met her, my lady in prison. Oh, right? dope. Yeah, I met her in there and fucking uh, through a homie, like I said, you know what I mean? Fucking, I was like, <laughs> hey, fool, let me holler at her. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you guys are still together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh. We started talking as friends and shit. At first, she didn't want to talk to me. She's like, oh, this was busted. Like, but then I was like, hey, I get out in like fucking two, three years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, talk to me for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> they, don't, they don't gotta be nothing serious. And then they evolved. You know, that yeah. friendship evolved. And then, yeah, it started. Yeah. Here yeah. we are. Married. <laughs> nice. So you got out, right? Mm -hmm. You got picked up by your girl. Um, you've been out, you're staying for how long? Since April of uh, uh, 2022. Okay. How has how was it for you adjusting? Because it, it takes a long time. I'm sure you're still adjusting. Yeah, shit. Um, I didn't even know how to use a credit card. You know, they have this uh, tap pay and shit. And I remember uh, the first time I used a credit credit card, I, I was embarrassed because she was Aww. like tap it. I was like tap it, like you know what I mean. I didn't know what how to how like, to how to do it. I don't even know how to tap. I just I just I barely started tapping. I just. Still so in the card. To this day, I still don't do it, but I do the little chip. I answer the Yeah, I, that's what I do. Yeah, that's the, the chip. Way, but yeah, I had. A, I got my my girl took me to the DMV. I got my license, so that was something I was. I was already prepping for that shit when I was in there, you know, and reading up on that, all that. So was it? Did you pass the first one? Yeah, I passed the first one. Oh, nice! Yeah. It took me like ten times. <laughs> I didn't. Oh yeah, I passed the the driving test. I passed it too. Yeah. Nice. So cool, yeah. How did you feel when you first walked out? I felt different. I felt um. Honestly, I can't even describe it. It was just a, um, it was like a, like it could be snatched from me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, better hurry up before I fucking. Ah, so it's, like, cause, cause it's you, real. Yeah, cause you, you know how they f my date? So I'm like, oh, cause you hear things like, oh, hey, yeah, Torres, uh, come back. You know, like, we messed up on your date. So for me, it was just kind of like, man, please let this shit be real. You know, like, and then finally there, they finally kicked me out. I see my girl walking out from from the car and shit. I was like, "Oh hell yeah!" Like it's, it's real. on, yeah. It's it's cool, you know. So it just felt like I had a smile the whole way, the whole drive, the whole six hours. I was about to ask how yeah, long. What, did, what was the first thing you ate? What was it? I think we ate In and Out. We took In and Out to the to the motel and shit. Oh, cause you guys stood out there. Yeah, we stood out there for like a few hours just to eat and fucking, you know what I mean. Get to know each other a little better. Than yeah. Uh, then we did. Yeah, we should have had the honey packs. Yeah. We should have gave it to your girl so oh, you could use that then, right then and then. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a two second. That would have been, <laughs> that been cracking. Uh, <laughs> that would have been cool right there. Yeah, nah, but uh, um, yeah, nah, it was lovely. Like, you know, it was one of those lifetime experiences. We and your into. mom? Oh, she was she was happy, you know what I mean? Like last time she seen me out here when I was sixteen. Mm -hmm. You know, so she still remembers me as that as that as that boy, sixteen year old boy and shit. So yeah. Where mm -hmm. are you at now? Right now? Well, as far as what uh I mean shit. like what do you do? Um Like you like you said you make music. Oh yeah, yeah. no, I'm Did a, you always um, make music? It started in Juvenile Hall, I was uh just fucking around on journals and shit like Writing raps and shit like that, you know? Oh, and, so you always kind of been doing it then? Yeah. To yeah. yourself? To myself. And then I got the the confidence when I started sharing it with homies in prison. And, and, and but they used to pump you up, Yeah, huh? you know, they'll be bumping on some, some beats and I'll be spitting and be like, damn, you got something. Like, 
And I'm like, nah, tell me the truth, darling. <laughs> like, you know I mean? I'm like, dick, come on, fool. You know what I mean? Yeah, tell me yeah, the truth. yeah. So they'll be like, nah, serio, fool. So um, once I got the phone, I recorded a, a track. And then just on the phone, I sent it to one of my lifer homies in, in Centinella. And he's like, hey, fool, I'm going to put you in the studio when you get out. Like, just, just as soon as you get out, I'm going to, like, just. Did you always keep in contact there. with him? Yeah, I'm still in contact with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh so, nice. Yeah, he's. He's the one that kind of like, like, do that shit fully, you know what I mean? It, it's, you're doing something good, something productive. Plus, you know what I mean? It's, you're in the hood and shit. Like, just, mm-hmm. it, it'll keep you out of trouble. So, I did it. I got out and started dropping my shit. Like, um, just not taking it too serious. And then uh, um, I ended up chopping up my ankle monitor in October of 2022. So, just like a few months ago. Now, like oh, almost a year ago. Yeah, October. It was October. Yeah, um, I chopped it off, and I was full time back into the streets and and jumping from Momo to Momo, selling dope, doing all that crazy shit. You know. What made you want to do that though? What made you want to cut it off? Um, being monitored. I didn't just, like just, after, I was, like you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. after you being gone for so long, and like. Yeah. You're still out in the world free, like even with the monitor, like. Yeah. Well, my PO, he he had more stricter uh, guidelines. Like he wanted me to check in like every three days, and um, I had a curfew. I'm like, man, the fun don't start till after ten, dog. Like, you know what I mean? So that, and I got caught back up in, into the streets. Honestly, it was just like one thing after another. It, it snowball effect, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. And a lot of people, they 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 don't. You could say, like, oh, you just did all that time. Because I hear this shit all the time from my homies, sure. from everybody. Like, you just did all that time. I feel like you want to come back out here. But I was 16 last time I was out here. And, and it just felt, I don't know, it just felt right. Like, it just felt like, it, 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 it happened slowly, gradually. You know what I mean? Like, it was just, I had a good job, good car. And I just start coming around little by little with the homies. And then, you know. You just wanted like, to feel it again. Nah, it was kind of thrown on my lap, like, oh, hey, here, you just got out, here's this. Like, I was like, oh, shit, cool, you know what I mean? I do need money, and I do need, like, so it started like that, and then once I started in that, I started, like, I was like, oh, I don't need to work, you know what I mean? I, I'm making enough money right here. Okay, and I get I it. And I started full time, and then. And you're still doing your rapping stuff? No, I stopped. I for, I paused it for, like. Shit, like what, like eight months, huh? I didn't, I didn't make no music. I just paused that and I went back to the streets. Like, you know what I mean? Thinking my head back ten times the size that it was. You know what I mean? And uh, um, I ended up checking myself into a halfway home because I was already there was already a warrant for my arrest. And I, I told my PO, I was like, Hey, look, I'm in this halfway home. Like, they talked to him, the staff talked to him, and, and he's like, Look, just finish, graduate that program. And I won't violate you. You won't go to jail. So I'm like, cool. So I, I graduated, graduated, went back to the hood. Boom. I was doing good again. Same shit. Doing good, doing good. This time I, I did start uh, taking the music serious. You know, I started dropping shit, dropping shit. And then um, that's when I met Mr. Criminal. I uh, How did you meet him? It was through Big Temps. I I had featured Big Temps on one of my tracks. It was uh, Make Him Feel It. Um, so I, I hit him up like, hey, fool, like, this this will be dope if you jump on it, you know. It has a like your sound on it, you know. So he jumped on it. And he's like, "Hey, he finished it within like an hour." He's like, "His verse." He's like, "Hey, we're gonna record this shit at Criminal Studio. Like, pull up. I want you to meet him, and then I want him to hear you." So went over there. He heard me, and, and Criminal was like, "All right." He was feeling it, you know. What I mean, he didn't want to give me too much. Uh, he didn't want to blow it. Yeah, make yeah, your head but, bigger. but he was feeling it and shit, and uh, he didn't hit me up that day. He hit me up later on the, on the week, like, "Hey." Let's chop it up. He gave me his number and um, yeah, homeboy fucking. Uh, I call him and you know we struck up a little deal. Shot pulled up to the studio and we chopped it up, man to man and and, and yeah, it was cool. Fucking you know. So you're signed to to crime family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I started doing that with him and um, we got. A, I'm working on my album right now, but currently with my legal troubles and shit, like I'm kind of more cautious of where I go and shit. Oh yeah, so, you have to be, of course. So yeah, but yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I'm I'm still dropping music, just on my time, like not with um, Crime Family, you know. But we're working on an album, and that's that's um that's my priority with them. And then I'm doing music on the side, you know. So 
Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to share that you haven't shared? Um, that's pretty much it. Shit. Um, just be on the lookout. My, uh, I got a video dropping soon. Um, it's called Certified Shooters. I'm going to drop it, as a matter of fact, tomorrow, just after this video. Um, I was supposed to turn myself in tomorrow, so I'm going to do it for that. You know, just, oh, okay. So I just, if I do turn myself in, I'm still in limbo right now. Okay. You know I mean? so, okay. Well, we're going to um, put, obviously, we're going to put your Instagram, okay. you know, tag so people can know where to follow you and reach you yeah. and stuff like that. But, um, well, uh, like, again, thank you so much for coming on Indicted TV. Yeah, thank you. Thank of course. You Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Thank <laughs> you.